I'd like to start this video with a challenge. That's to find an arrangement of three linearly independent vectors in the plane. That's three linearly independent vectors in the plane. This is a very important challenge, so I encourage you to pause the video, not give up easily, and then come back to this video and see if your solution is the same as mine. When I pose this question to my class, it always leads to very productive and lengthy discussion during which I get very many good attempts. So here, I listed some of those good attempts that I usually get. And one of the first examples usually involves two vectors that are parallel and a third one that's not parallel to the first two. The rationale being that this vector cannot be expressed as a linear combination of these two. And that's quite right. But recall that the definition of linear dependence calls for a set to be labeled as linearly dependent when at least one of the vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. There is no requirement that each of the vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. Only that there is at least one that can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. And in this case, either one of these two vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. Because you only have to take a multiple of the other one. This one would be a multiple less than one of this one. And this one would be a multiple greater than one of this one. And those linear combinations simply don't need to involve this vector. Or put a zero in front of this vector. So this set is linearly dependent because these two can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. Not all, but that's not required. Now let's move on to this very common attempt that involves two vectors that are not parallel and the zero vector. And the rationale here is that neither this one nor this one can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. But what about the zero vector? Well, the zero vector is always zero times all the other vectors added together. The zero vector can therefore always be expressed as a linear combination of the remaining vectors. Just put zeros in front of all of those vectors in your linear combination. And remember that the definition does not require for this linear combination to be non-trivial. The term non-trivial only arises in the second definition of linear dependence where we're looking for a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. And in this case, that non-trivial combination will be one of this vector, zero of this plus zero of this. And it's non-trivial because of that one. Not all coefficients are zero. So the main takeaway here is that as soon as there is the zero vector in the mix, this set of vectors is linearly dependent because that zero vector can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. And the definition that calls for at least one of the vectors to be a linear combination of the rest is therefore satisfied by the zero vector itself. So zero vector, automatically linearly dependent. And that also rules out this example that has two zeros and a non-zero vector. Well here, two of the vectors, each one of these vectors, can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. So this set is two, automatically linearly dependent. The more zeros, the merrier. The more zeros, the more linearly dependent. At least one zero vector right there, linearly dependent. Okay, now let's move on to this example, which contains two vectors that point almost along the same line and a third vector that points in a completely different direction. Well, in this case, decomposition may be difficult because of this awkward arrangement, but difficult doesn't mean impossible. And as we've seen before, any two non-zero vectors that don't point along the same line ex can express the entire plane. The entire plane falls within the span of these two vectors, actually is the span of these two vectors. So even though it may not be so easy to express this vector as a linear combination of these two, and if you think about it numerically, this calculation might not be accurate, but that doesn't change the fact that it's possible. So any one of these vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. So actually, this is perhaps one of the more linearly dependent sets on the board in the sense that any one of the vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. And then there's also 
this example, which is not that much different from this one, where the three vectors all point in different directions. And you might come up with this one if you don't think of negative numbers, because having vectors arranged like this requires the use of negative numbers in order to express one as a linear combination of the rest. But of course, remember that when we're working in linear algebra, we're talking about addition and multiplication by a number, any number, positive, negative, whole, integer, uh, rational, irrational, transcendental, you name it. All the numbers along the real line are in. So here you might have to use a negative number, but any one, any two of these vectors span the rest of the plane. So any one of these vectors, just like here, can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. So we tried and tried and couldn't come up with three linearly independent vectors in the plane. Two, no problem. Three seems to be impossible. And it's just a fact of life. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a theorem that one can prove. It's just a realization and a very deep one. It probably took people a long time to come up with this realization, but we now say that the magic number for the plane is two. Two is the greatest number of linearly independent vectors one can have in the plane. And it's not at all obvious. I don't think too many of you answered my initial challenge just like that. It took some time. It took some experience. And it just happens to be our common experience that there are at most two linearly independent vectors in the plane. And next we'll do what we always do, which is to come to a very important conclusion for geometric vectors and then carry over those ideas to other types of vectors, such as polynomials, functions, audio signals, sets of numbers, and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. Inspires the rest of linear algebra to formulate an 